Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Whiskey Wanders. And today, we're back on the west side of Los Angeles in a Costco that is basically the farthest west you're ever going to get, at least in the contiguous United States, at the Costco in Culver City. And I will admit that I was very amused to this time around see a limited release uh, from the kind of up-and-coming whiskey maker Whistlepig, uh, the Summerstock Pit Viper Edition, the one with the sunglasses and the pig, <laughs> as well as a more tried and true classic scotch that presumably probably shuns that kind of shenaniganry, looks down its nose, if you will, which is the Clen Fittich 18, whose only real gimmick, I guess, is that it's 18 years old, and really many, many more whiskeys and so much more. Now, before we get to it, if you like these videos, uh, if you like the wonders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you, <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow. And again, we are so, so thankful for that but also because you get updates when our newest videos come out on sundays when our whiskey quickies the short videos come out sort of randomly and when our other videos sometimes come out in between all right now let's get down to the video all right so for today uh while we are getting the wandavision warmed up and hopefully you're getting warmed up there uh let's do a real quick whiskey check and uh, today i think i'm going to be enjoying a little subtle nuance of some of this Hibiki Harmony, <laughs> and I've been sipping off it, as you can see, it's it's getting down to the lower side, luckily we got some backup, um, but uh, I always do enjoy it, especially if you want something that's a nice palette, but not going to kind of put you on your rear, so let's see if we can get a pop here, up, oh, flip it both sides, get a pop, nah, not too bad, let's get a little bit of juice, ooh yeah, and to whiskey because honestly let's face it you can never really drink too much of it <laughs> you can only just drink it too fast cheers mm. oh. oxygenated it's pretty good it's got a good it once airs out a little bit that is quite good oh yeah so first up for today is a relative newcomer and i say relative newcomer to the american whiskey world uh that we see here at costco in culver which is the whistle pig summer stock pit viper edition now obviously it caught my eye for a couple reasons first is because as a child of the 80s the <laughs> unmistakable look of oakley's and neon colors just struck at the heart of nostalgia for me for those long summer days for rat tails movies with bullies with jean jackets cassette tapes motley crew and parents smoking marble reds and cars with really no concern for the long-term effects and by long-term effects i mean awesomeness <laughs> so yeah it really did kind of catch my eye just and just bring me back to a different century really <laughs> but all those emotions kicked in and just seeing a bottle like this for me i mean it, it's one of those types of over the top playing to nostalgia and a good healthy dose of greenwashing hype about sustainable farming and solar poweredness and all that kind of stuff the problem is that it really starts to kind of peak up my bs radar when it comes to whiskey just like, doo -doo -doo -doo, because of the fact that they are essentially focusing on things that don't really affect the flavor of the whiskey but just kind of affect how the whiskey is made and ultimately it's really about the palate now this whistle pig was founded back in 2007 and is based out of shoreham virginia on a very large farm where they actually age the whiskey in the barrels that are made from the wood that's harvested on the farm so that is actually pretty cool this summer stock version specifically was finished in three types of oak. First is the typical char three barrels of American oak. Then some sort of super secret proprietary toasted barrel, which, you know, makes me kind of wonder a little bit, suspicious. And finally, a, a sun toasted barrels, which uh, from what I can tell, what that means is that they use like a large magnifying glass to burn the barrels, like maybe someone did uh, with ants as a child, not me, but other cooler people and then finally they use something called a solara method um, that is sort of an uh, experimental approach to fractional blending to try to maintain consistency throughout the blend i think it comes from the sherry world it is a limited release uh, it does not have an age statement on it and it is made with a variety of undisclosed whiskeys so it sort of has a kind of similar modus operandi to barrel spirits uh, but with a considerably higher larger helping of quirkiness and it's a blend of both uh, wheat as well as rye whiskeys put together. Now, the price that we see it here at the Costco in Culver is at $59.99, which is pretty good, especially because you can still find it at Total Wine uh, for 
$3.99, which is the next cost up from Costco for the major big box stores. And uh, we also could find it at one of our local whiskey mongers who had it for just slightly less at $69.99. So that means if we did end up buying it at Costco, we would have saved about $10 off uh, the local whiskey mongers provider price or 16.67%. Now, the ABV on the Whistle Pig is at 86 proof or 43% ABV, which is honestly sort of low uh, for uh, an American whiskey, especially one that has such a, a blend of weeded and rye whiskeys mixed in there. Usually you would assume, especially because the rye, you'd have a higher ABV, maybe something above 50% that really is necessary to convey kind of those different whiskey personalities and blends. But again, that is just my take. And then also the tasting notes on it mention that really despite the Macho Man Randy Savage level of bracket dosha that the bottle on the palate actually is sort of lackluster um it has a strong sweetness to it uh with things like caramel maple sugar and butter cream and what one reviewer describes as brown sugar pop tart flavor so <laughs> if that doesn't feel like watching gi joe's on saturday morning i don't know what it does now, the review scores for The Whistle Pig are going to be on the lower side, uh, as I would sort of anticipate. Uh, and when we average all the scores out together that I could find, it comes out to 82 points out of 100, which is, again, where I'd expect it to be. Um, so obviously this one is going to be a pass, but the thing is that Whistle Pig overall as a genre or as a whiskey maker is sort of an anomaly to me uh, because I think we do have one. Let me... Yeah, because we have the Whistle Pig 15, which I have not yet opened up. And the thing is that I hear when I'm in the aisle, oftentimes, really more than most other whiskeys, someone's like, oh, my dad loves this Whistle Pig. Or they say, I mix it for an old fashioned, or et cetera, et cetera. So I do hear that in the aisles a lot of times, noticeably more. Um, but, uh, you know, I think when I look at it, when I look at the background, I look at how short it has been, and I look at like all the kind of selling stuff, you know, it just feels a little too P.T. Barnum and WWF mixed together and like overly hyped and focused on innovative flash, but seems to be lacking kind of those basic strong fundamentals of what makes classic whiskey great. That's just one of those things that really makes me skeptical. And all the ESG and the solar panels and the 80s nostalgia and the sunglasses, <laughs> it's just very pick me, uh, which to me for whiskey is a bit of a turnoff because, you know, I have lots of whiskeys that I drink on a daily basis, um, but also I look for whiskeys that uh, that can be collected. And this one just doesn't really seem like it fits into either or is worth it for that one. So, yeah, uh, that one is going to be a pass. The Whistle Pig Summer Stock uh, Pit Viper, although... <laughs> Those sunglasses are bitching. Now, on the other side of this is a whiskey, uh, more uh, specifically a scotch, that is basically the antithesis of the whistle pig. The antithesis of that in-your-face, innovate or die. I'm the new shiniest version of whatever product <laughs> mentality, which is going to be this Glen Fittich 18. Now, the Glen Fittich uh, 18 is a nice step up in uh, the line from Glen Fittich that is basically uh, ubiquitous here in the United States. I mean, if you are in an airport lounge in Chicago, if you're at a company function at a banquet hall, or hey, even if it's your buddy's house who likes scotch, there's probably going to be uh, at least one Glen Fittich laying around somewhere. I mean, that's part of the reason why it is the number one single malt scotch sold pretty much anywhere in the world. And I would imagine it's probably one of the first steps up, it was for me, uh, that you go to after kind of getting through the blends like the Johnny Walker Red, Black, and Blue. Now, this 18 specifically, um, obviously, is aged 18 years old. It's made from 100% malted barley and is aged in both ex-bourbon as well as ex-oloroso casks. And one of the things I like most about it is that there are no smoke and mirrors, right? <laughs> There's no lasers or t-shirt cannons or big screen pyrotechnics around when it comes out. They just stick to really managing those few things that do have the biggest effect on whiskey, primarily age and ABV, which obviously it has the age and the ABV. Well, we'll get to that here in a second. Now, the Glen Fetish 18, uh, as we see here at Costco, is at a very reasonable price, especially if you compare it to a similarly aged 18-year-old scotch, like, let's say, a McAllen, because we see it at $99.99, which seems to be the going price, uh, because you can find it at Total Wine for the exact same price. And uh, at BevMo, at least online, I couldn't see it. I don't really visit BevMo that much. So that means that by buying it at Costco, um, well, we're not going to really get an over-under price uh, over Total Wine or presumably BevMo or even a percentage. So, you know, we can call it a wash. But that being said, let's talk about the biggest detractor from the whiskey, which is at least in my mind is the ABV. Because ABV on it is at 
43% ABV, which is uh, not terrible. It's not the worst. It's not the lowest possible ABV you can get and still call it at whiskey at 40%. But, you know, again, coming from a bourbon background, really anything under 50% starts to get scoffed at as underpowered. It's like when you look at vintage men's watches, uh, they look so, so tiny, even though that was standard for the time. And I think that Glenfiddich is kind of of the same ilk. You know, they're, they're, they're making this whiskey uh, in a formula and in a way that they have done for quite some time. But when you see someone wearing a vintage watch on a modern man's wrist, it just looks very, very small. It even looks almost too small for women at this point. And I think that the 43% AV is, is analogous to that. So that's my only real gripe against it. I do like Glenn Fittich. Uh, I think we just finished. <laughs> been using as a way to focus uh, all the cameras and things like that, but uh, the Glenn Fittich 12, which is very enjoyable. That being said, a, the scores that I could find on it uh, on average were still pretty good. A high B at 87 points out of 100. And I would imagine that a lot of that lower score is gonna be because of the fact that it is relatively underpowered as far as APV goes. Even scotches, they have lower ABVs. I get it, but uh, 43 is still quite low. But really, ultimately, all that being said, obviously, <laughs> it was a buy. I do like Glenn Fittich, uh, and I'm happy that we got this one as a nice step up from the 12, so we can get an idea of what those extra couple years, those extra six years, really do to it. If it gets a stronger, more kind of barrel flavor, or maybe it perhaps mellows out or smooths out, which is hard to believe because the 12 <laughs> is smooth like butter. So that is the Glenn Fittich. 18. All right, so that is it for today's Whiskey Wanders at the Costco in Culver City here in Los Angeles on the west side. And I really hope that you enjoy this video. And in fact, I hope that you enjoy all of our videos, uh, whether it is the Wanders or the Halls or the Reviews or the Unbottlings, the Unboxings, or really all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you because we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you. And if you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe because again, it does really help the channel to grow and we are growing. I'm so, so thankful for that, but also because you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays. Also, also, <laughs> I like to think it pleases the whiskey gods. It's good for your whiskey mojo and you can never go wrong with happy whiskey gods. Now, uh, before I go, just remember if you do find a whiskey that you love, you know, just buy it. Uh, because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And in this case, <laughs> it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'm out and adios.